Hello there. I'd like to do a follow-up to the first Boris Johnson um, uh, video I talked about his native job because there's something else I want to look on it and draw attention to. Um, but first of all, before that, I'd like to do an update on this full and new moon uh, business that I've been looking at. Um, the essential theory is that the full new full and new moon points the degree um, if it conjoins a planet in a, a natal chart or another chart somewhere, whether it's natal or mundane, whatever kind of chart it is, the um, that that becomes a hot spot. It becomes full, and it be, or becomes um, somehow infused with a with a dynamism, almost like a capacitor, charged up, ready to be ready for the spark to come out when a planet or it transits it. And for these past few days, and well into next week, um, uh, up to the fifth or sixth, Mercury retrogrades right on that twenty-four Cancer uh, point. So that twenty-four Cancer, if you remember, was the full moon um, uh, of July, and uh, pre preceding that, there was a ten thirty-eight um, uh, uh, Cancer Capricorn um, new moon. And uh, we saw that in the charts of Jeffrey Epstein, uh, Julian Assange, Angela Merkel, uh, Donald Trump and um, Richard Nixon. I had a little look at those uh, charts, if you remember the previous one. Well, I thought I'd just update uh, because we were looking at when Venus went over it and Venus went over that point. Well, Boris Johnson has become and we looked at Boris Johnson last time because of the uh, ascendant descendant axis and also is on his MC and across the fourth tenth axis in uh, 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 suggesting something to do with Korea and uh, his uh, position in society the tenth fourth house axis and underneath this the, the uh, basis on which he stands has changed uh, significantly. So that's the fourth 10th house axis. Anyway, so Donald Trump, well, since last time, was, was since I spoke about it beforehand, we've had the Mueller investigations, Mueller and the Mueller report into supposed Russian collusion. Uh, that's all proved now to be m much of a mess. Uh, Mueller didn't even write the report. He was stumbling. He didn't know what he'd written. He would. He refused to answer most of the questions. And uh, his team of biased partisan uh, members of the um, of the opposite side, partisan. Uh, uh, tried to really do some damning evidence in this report, but it, the whole report was based on or initiated by something called the Steele Report, which was a report about digging the dirt on um, on President Trump and uh, uh, supposedly Russian collusion, and it was written by an M um, MI5, ex-MI5, uh, Mr. Steele, and uh, he made some of it up. It was built on speculative stuff, and it was commissioned through G4S, I think, um, uh, by the Democratic Party. So it's them that initiated, the Democrats initiated a, um, a, a, a kind of sting operation and got this report, and they've had two years and millions and millions of dollars, of, and nothing has concluded nothing except it's all rather slanted and, and so on so anybody interested in that that was the supposed opposition so i believe um donald trump has come out on top of that one and also in the um last week donald trump has got more funding for his war and i was thinking of the symbolism of saturn in cancer Saturn often represents the wall, a block, a boundary, a partition, a, a sense of separation, separating out. It's in league with this symbolism. And what it means psychologically for us is the gradual separating out of the um, uh, of our consciousness into an outside and an inside. Although ultimately consciousness is one, it, it's divided in the body through the senses, and we have to have a sense of what is happening in here and out there. Also, Saturn, in a deeper sense, is the coming to terms with incarnate reality itself, the bound, limited time, uh, condition of time and space and aging. So Saturn represents boundary. Saturn is in Cancer in Donald Trump's chart at 24. And uh, what's happened is he's got funding for the wall. So it's uh, Cancer is uh, America. United States of America is a very Cancerian country. Sun in Cancer, Jupiter in Cancer, Mercury in Cancer. And um, 
uh, so it's, this this Cancerian stuff has been hit off over the past um, few years by the transits of Pluto. Saturn is opposed there at the moment, or the all those uh, um, Cancer planets. And so what what we come is is Saturn, Cancer in this sense is one's homeland. I mean, I found it interesting a few years ago when uh, the the Department of Homeland Security was set up when Saturn was transiting through the sign of Cancer in the United States uh, chart. So it must have been going over the sun. So, so it's this homeland security. And uh, Cancer has a lot to do with the nation, with where we belong, with um, this sense of a homeland of protection. So Saturn is the border wall between Mexico and the United States and new funding has come for that. So it looks like that's turned in uh, Trump's favour uh, uh, to follow the agenda with, with, uh, for which he was elected. Then Jeffrey Epstein has noted the other day that uh, he was found in a cell, a bit doubled up, perhaps beaten up by fellow uh, inmates or whatever. Yeah, who knows what's going on, but um, that his moon is in, uh, his natal moon is in the 12th house. And of course he was arrested and um, he's now being held uh, pending trial for uh, uh, sex um, exploitation uh, charges of one kind or another. We haven't heard anything about uh, uh, Merkel yet. It's been off the news, uh, but I suspect that some announcement over the next week or so will be made about the condition of her health. Julian Assange has recent more attacks from CNN, a news station in the United States. Articles have come out about this, that and the other, condemning the man for one reason or another. Most of it um, uh, somewhat spurious and, uh, and a kind of hatchet job, really. If you want to know more about that, I would uh, absolutely uh, recommend the Duran, which is a YouTube channel, which uh, which my... Um, Alexander McCurris is a, is a great spokesman uh, about what's going on underneath and uh, in the news he's a great writer and a great uh, he, he seems to have his um, his mind on the on the pulse of things and to, has a take on these political uh, machinations of governments. And then the other one was uh, uh, Richard Nixon, but of course I didn't know he's 24, the cancer, um, hit off by the new moon. Well, I didn't know before I said it, but of course it, the moon landings, uh, the supposed new moon landings um, celebrations were on this week, have been on for about 10 days on the television. And Nixon was in office on the moon landings, but I didn't hear or see any any anything about Richard Nixon, even though he was the president at the time, there is obviously a bias towards uh, uh, what happened uh, back in the 1970s to this man. He left office in disgrace, and so we kind of got this this Neptune in Cancer. And Richard Nixon was there because the moon landings happened. Moon landings in inverted commas. Um, for which I, I must, if I, I put them like that, because there's a lot of questions, unanswered questions. And the best person to see on this is Marcus Allen. He's done several lectures on it uh, during, and, uh, and uh, a really great job in terms of bringing up certain questions which have yet to be answered about the supposed moon landings. But I, I found it quite funny because Richard Nixon's name and his image weren't seen alongside this, so, but he was there. So he was kind of Neptunized or merged in somehow in the background. So you couldn't see him, but the very substance of Richard Nixon must have been around because he was he 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 greeted the um, the the astronauts when they returned from space. So he was around too, and then of course the Boris Johnson gets in. But there was one chart that I wanted to show here uh, that I that I should have shown um, when I did. Um, uh, it's the England chart, which I hope that you can all see. I'll just put that up there. And uh, a, a rather glaring omission, I think, because here we have 954 Capricorn Cancer. And if we remember that the eclipse point is from the 4th to the 10th, and yet again, we can see the sun, the British national identity, the uh, the monarch, and also a change in the in the um, in the prime ministership to Boris Johnson. Uh, um, the sun often represents things to do with orange or white or something, and I, I often connect it to blonde hair for some reason. 
Anyway, so here we have the national identity being called in and the national status. So uh, the 10th house often represents status in the world and uh, a lot of uh, a lot of celebrations or policies or things are signed at noon because the sun is in the 10th house. The other thing that I found interesting was that the Saturn is transiting to this 16 uh, degree Capricorn uh, Mercury and Boris Johnson announced that he's being he's going to send a leaflet because Mercury represents communications, leaflets, uh, important speeches, the national debate. So someone has come around and seizing this national debate, what you might call the narrative, I suppose. You can see here the mm, third house to do with papers and uh, talk shops and political shows. Um, well, this Mercury here is, um, and we've had a, a big spending spree. Boris Johnson is going around and saying he can uh, pay for this and pay for that. So this Saturn has come on here and we have a sense that he's seizing control of the narrative and will be sending out a, a paper or uh, some kind of um, leaflet out to everybody in the country, just as um, uh, David Cameron did about uh, Brexit, which was an extremely biased uh, 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 leaflet uh, when it came round. Uh, and so on. So I wanted to share that the, the full moon things are, are are showing in the lives, although it's still yet to finish. This Mercury retrograde right on the twenty fourth degree of Cancer is a rather ominous um, element, isn't it? Lots of statements, lots of things coming uh, out into the open, communications going on behind the scene, and eventually around about the 4th or 5th of August, we will see Mercury go forward again and there will be larger scale announcements to come. So anyway, those were the hot spots that I wanted to point out um, and update you on what was happening in the world in relation to them. Uh, next up, uh, however, is uh, I want to look at Boris Johnson's chart again and uh, in relation to uh, Winston Churchill's chart. Because as you may know, um, Boris Johnson's, uh, one of his major heroes, if not the hero uh, in his life, was um, the figure of Winston Churchill. And I have a feeling that he feels somewhat identified with this character, uh, with this hero. Obviously, he was a real life hero, um, but uh, he, since he didn't know him personally, uh, what we've got here is a, a, a sense of a romantic involvement with, a, with an important historical figure. Now, if you remember in Boris Johnson's chart, I talked a lot about the, well, I talked some about the Jupiter-Neptune uh, opposition. It's this if you can, you can myth-make, you can make dreams come true. And his, uh, and I'm going to bring that up now because there are certain features of, um, of Winston Churchill's chart and um, Boris Johnson's chart that are very similar. But there are one, there's one great element which is uh, missing, which I want to point out. So I hope that you can see now, I'm going, I'm going to do a comparison. This chart over here is Winston Churchill, and this chart is Boris Johnson. So Boris Johnson has Winston Churchill as a, a hero worships him. He's written a biography about uh, him called The uh, uh, Winston Factor, or The Churchill Factor, I can't remember uh, which exactly. Um, but there, he, 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 Boris Johnson comes in at a time where I feel that he's taken on this uh, idea or ideal of saving the nation. So we see this Jupiter-Neptune coming into play, and this uh, Neptune is sesquiquadrate the sun, and this is uh, uh, semi-square. So Jupiter-Neptune relates to this sun by the peculiar aspects of sesquiquadrate and semi-square. Now, those two I haven't got time to go into in detail. Um, uh, what that what that often means is that there's a there's a tension, a slight tension that is connected um, through this. So what we have here is his his essence is connected, tying into a kind of dream. So or or uh, and Jupiter Neptune is the wish fulfillment aspect, a sense that what you think the the great heroic deeds that are possible in the future that you could you could fulfill that in some way so but the interesting thing is about here is that you can see Johnson's sun and uh, Venus, which feature so prominently in his horoscope um 
is exactly conjunct Winston Churchill's MC. This means that the public persona that Churchill um, showed, this uh, grit and determination, and he spoke, if you like, from the depths. He spoke, he, he, I think only a, a, a Mercury and Scorpio could form words of, a, a, about survival, about raising that, that spirit of survival and fighting and even, even you know, blood on the beach and we'll fight them everywhere and so on. I mean, amazing speeches uh, that Churchill came up with. And, but you can see in his chart, there is a great deal of fire. One, two, three, four, five, six planets in fire and Mars in the first house. So what we have here is a real great deal of inspiration and intuition, firing up things. Churchill wasn't very good on the detail either. He was never good at real planning or organization. A lot of his ideas had to be uh, shelved because he would come up with too many. You can see in this chart, there's only one planet in earth signs and that's this uh, um, uh, Pluto in Taurus. So what we have here is uh, obviously Mercury is opposed to this uh, and he, he has an eye on the nation, eye, eye on the collective survival instinct. So he was a person to voice this right from, right from um, well before uh, anybody else was, he was warning about the dangers and came in at a time to save the nation. Well, I have a feeling that Boris Johnson, in a way, is doing this as well, or feels as if this is what he is doing. And um, maybe he needs this kind of um, sense of identity with uh, a famous person like Winston Churchill in order to do what he has to do. Uh, one doesn't know how he's going to do it. There's been a lot of idea that there's a, it's a lot of bluster, this uh, Mars. But look, this Mercury is square to Pluto. His Mercury is opposed to Pluto. We also have a Jupiter and Neptune opposition in uh, Churchill's chart, you see, the same as we have the Jupiter-Neptune opposition here. The moon is square Pluto. Here, the moon is in Scorpio. There are a lot of connections. And also, we have the famous uh, rebellion against this societal norms aspect of Saturn-Uranus. And in here, we have Saturn opposed Uranus. They're in different signs, of course, but this gives us an idea of the of the dynamic connections, these patterns that play in. This is uh, this is obviously the rebel. Saturn often represents societal norms and controls and what you should do, and um, it's a sense of fitting in and not rocking the boat, or or you'll be punished. And Uranus says, "To hell with that! I don't want any stock with that. I'm not going to be told what to do, what to say, or or anything." So here we have an innate rebellion going on in, and this rebellion against the forces of uh, containment, as opposed to the the uh, forces of um, shattering things to 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 break down the old societal norms and move forward. So. Uh, Johnson has this in his chart, very, very powerful 1964-65 conjunction between Uranus and Pluto, which you don't have to, time to go into now. So the major thing that I wanted to uh, sort out, however, is a, a little warning or a caution. And that is that um, although Johnson has plenty of earth signs here, he doesn't do detail particularly well. He's an ideas man. He likes speeches. He likes uh, rousing, the, um, uh, rousing the spirit. But I think this is because, in, in essence, he doesn't have any fire in his chart. This is called, when you have a missing element, it is often related to the, what they call the inferior function. Of consciousness. Jung called it the inferior function. And it's to do with intuition and to do with um, the in, finding inspiration or wanting to be great. And I think if Johnson isn't careful, this whole idea of being great or self-mythologizing um, and somebody said the other day, you, you, you can't busk your way through this. It's as if some people were saying that 
Johnson was very much an improviser and hadn't really got down to the brass tacks of decent politics, didn't really know how to do it, been bumbling along. But I, I, I feel that's a cultivated image in many ways. There is a sense in here that he is, he is following an impulse deep within and he, he feels stirred up by the nation's plight. I think that's real. I don't think he's just playing a game. Uh, but this lack of fire clearly means that he could be over taken by this need for magnificence. He could be overtaken by the um, sense of being a meaningful hero, a, a, a significant part in history. And I've always, I, whenever you get to say missing fire, the unconscious uses it. So he may be staying, being stirred up by unconscious forces. And the problem with that is that when you when you have been overtaken by a complex, when you feel yourself so over involved in the collective, you can lose yourself in the role, and therefore not be open to persuasion, because you're you're being if you like um, uh, pull, pu pulled on pulled down the river. You know you 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 get infused with collective energy of your rightness and your idealism and your and you can rouse uh, the national. Uh, mood and there's a great power here uh, so Boris Johnson doesn't have any fire and so I think he feels that he this this the, what it what was lacking in him was definitely in Winston Churchill anyway that's what I wanted to say about the uh, Boris Johnson chart because um, what we got here is a sense of a purposeful mission fire signs need a mission and that's what I feel he's on. So we have to uh, have a careful eye open to that, that this sense of mission doesn't overtake him and become rather fundamentalist. And in the end, of course, um, pushing things, pushing his agenda uh, because he feels he's right. Righteousness, righteous mission can often take over where there are no fire signs uh, in, in a chart because the unconscious seeks a, a, a balance in life and seeks that uh, public prominence, which Boris Johnson, of course, has been well known to want most of his life. Thank you.